June, almost done, and it's been a tragic month for the city's Somali community. Two more of its young men have been murdered. 24-year-old Ahmed Hassan shot at the Eaton Center. Then over the weekend, 28-year-old Hussein or Gedi Hussein was killed in an apartment at Young and Shepherd. Toronto Police Sergeant Dan Nielsen is investigating this case. There's good quality video surveillance system in the building, and uh, what we're able to see is shortly after the shooting, four to five males leaving through a street level side door. The males are in their late teens to early 20s, and they appear to be of African descent. That's Toronto Police Sergeant Dan Nielsen speaking about a case that he is investigating. The two Toronto murders follow a series of killings and other young Somali men in Alberta for some insight into these crimes and efforts to stop them. I'm joined by Ahmed Hassan. He's the president of the Canadian Somali Congress. Good morning. Uh, Good morning, Matt. It's a difficult situation for your community. It appears that the young men who've been murdered and their suspected killers were involved in gangs, and there has been some investigation into uh, that gang culture. What can you tell us about, um, in particular, the young men? You knew them both. I I, I knew some of their parents uh, and uh, met them a couple of times, but I didn't know them personally, mm. uh, the last two uh, individuals. What I can tell you is that, yes, it's been a difficult month for, month for the community and that uh, it's uh, an ongoing problem. Uh, but the solution, I believe, lies in Alberta because that in that province we were able to turn things around and, in fact, improve to the uh, improve the quality of of uh, overall uh, safety of that of of those cities in Alberta. What were you able to do in Alberta? We were able to take a community approach and uh, connect the dots between the community, the police, the uh, the schools, uh, the representatives and change the dynamic in terms of what needs to happen with respect to crime stoppers, with respect to strengthening the provincial uh, uh, witness protection programs that were a little bit weaker than the federal witness protection programs. And actually in that particular instance, the Canadian Somali community in Alberta was able to contribute to uh, submissions to the Alberta legislature that strengthened the provincial uh, witness protection program, something that would benefit all Albertans, not just Somalis in Alberta. We've spoken about this several times in the past, but based on what was happening in Alberta, what was your understanding as to why young Somali men were being drawn towards gang activity? Well, the the, the narrative around gang activity is the minority narrative. The vast majority of, of Canadians of Somali background in Alberta are succeeding uh, way beyond the, their expectations. Mm. They, they've gone there just like other Canadians to pursue economic opportunities. However, there's no denying uh, that there's an underbelly of uh, a small group of people who've gone there for uh, for other reasons and and they have uh, been caught up in 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 uh, in gang activity that has uh, that has obviously led to a lot of deaths over there. The good news is that uh, through hard work, through uh, the community taking ownership of this issue in Alberta, the killings were, were stopped and we were able to turn things around. I think the same thing needs to happen in Ontario. It's harder because uh, we had the luxury of a smaller group of people in Alberta who we could reach and and, and uh, enable them to turn things around. It's harder to do that in Ontario, especially when the conversation isn't even uh, being um, carried out with respect to integration. We're still uh, talking about settling people who are not even refugees. And so the the conversation has to change. And I think I have to give credit to the Alberta representatives. They had an open mind about this, and that's simply not the case here. So what is lacking in terms of that conversation here that that, that, that is happening? I mean, you say that there's an open mind in Alberta. You just, you just need to look at some of the, um, when, when some of the news reports come out uh, of these killings, um, you just need to look at the comments section to realize how out of touch people are with respect to the real issue. The real issue is community safety. Yeah. And the Canadian Somali community has a role to contribute to that safety. You can't look at this in isolation. You have to look at this as a partnership. If you don't empower the larger Canadian Somali community to deal with these issues, you will not contribute to the to the overall safety of, of neighborhoods and communities. And I think that's the key uh, distinction that we were able to communicate to officials in Alberta, and they 
all credit to them, they were able to get that. And once that happened, there was a huge breakthrough. So if those officials are listening now, what would you say to them about that need for communication and that sense for openness and that sense for engagement that you're talking about? I, I would say that having uh, witness protection programs, Crime Stoppers, all these good programs uh, that are good, uh, just because they're out there doesn't mean that the community is aware of them. You need to roll up your sleeves, work with the community, and go into the community and actually uh, enable people to understand how these programs work like Crime Stoppers. So go actually have police yes, actively engage in that community, in embed the communi- themselves in the community and say, this is, this is, this is what crime we stoppers. can do this for is, you. Yes, this is how it works. Uh, you, you know, this is witness protection. This is how you, bail works. This is how... You know, you can keep your kid off the street uh, in junior high when they start going off the rails. Uh, find out why is it that uh, our young females are succeeding ex- uh, well, but our young males are dropping out. What's the difference? You you have to take that long-term approach. You can't just react to the latest shooting. And would there be, briefly, a receptive audience for those agencies in the communities if yes. they were to extend that hand? Absolutely, because the, that was the case in Alberta. I don't see why it would be different in Ontario. It's just not happening. More on this to come, certainly. It's good to see you again. Thank you. You're welcome.